Voice Personality Hunt 2021, SMU's only hosting competition. My name is Faith, and I'll be your host for the semifinals round. We're now down to 12 very talented semifinalists. Following a brutal battle in the quarterfinals, our mentors have picked their teams. Team Alestia, Team Tracy, and Team Kennedy. These mentors will be helping their contestants through the semifinals task in the hopes that their mentees make it through to the grand finals. It'll be a cutthroat battle though, because only six contestants can make it through to the grand finals, and only one can be crowned champion of Voice Personality Hunt 2021. For the semifinals challenge, contestants were paired up and assigned a guest. They then had to conduct an interview with the guest, but if you thought it was going to be smooth sailing, think again because we dropped a curveball in the middle of every interview and contestants have to fight to solve it. The show must go on after all. This might all sound a little bit beyond terrifying, but don't worry, we didn't just drop them in the deep end. To prepare them for the semi-finals, we invited Suhaimi Yusuf from Fly Entertainment to give them a masterclass in co-hosting and interviewing techniques. We also have an esteemed panel of judges this round with Victoria Ong, Maddie Bretaché Lowe, Jeremy Yeo, and Edward Choi, who will be judging their performances. How exciting! Before meeting our semi-finalists, we'd like to thank our sponsors, I'm Kim Korean Barbecue, Wonder Gelato, Smooze, and Food Panda for their generous support. Indulge in a wide range of delicious dishes and desserts with I'm Kim Korean Barbecue and Wonder Gelato's outlets, and enjoy a nice ice bar from Smooze. Be spoiled for choice with Food Panda's food choices and delivery options. And now, without further ado, let's give it up for Joshua and Shivanan, who will be interviewing Gabriel from Bamboo Builders. Take it away! Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the evening show. Whoops. The evening show. I'm your host, Joshua. And I'm Shiva, and we're taking part in the semi-finals of the Voice Personality Hunt 2021. So it's early week three of school, and I'm so glad that the week is nearly over, because I'm already counting down to the weekend to crash. Lucky there's only just one more day. I know, right? Just week three, and I'm feeling exhausted already. The amount of readings that we have is just, oh my goodness, I feel like my back's going to break under all the readings. And you know, I was just looking through all the things that I have to study and all the graduation requirements, and I'm just feeling so lost. Yeah, I know exactly how you feel. And like there's mods and on top of that, there's CSV and internship. It gets so overwhelming, but I'm so glad that today's theme is about going beyond our barriers. And on the topic of CSV, we also have a very special guest today who is Gabriel Dunn. And he was actually an SMU alumni also. So he is a founder of a social enterprise called Bamboo Builders. And he won the award for 35 under 35 um, Inspiring Entrepreneur Award. So without further ado, let's welcome Gabriel Tan. Hi, Gabriel. Hi, everyone. Hi. Good to be here. Yes, yeah, good. Great to have you uh, here tonight. Can I just invite you to share a bit about yourself? Okay. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Gabriel, um, and I originally was an alumni at SMU, actually. Yeah, so I was doing uh, business strategy. Uh, with a second major in Global Asia. So Global Asia is another major from uh, the School of Social Sciences. Yeah, and yep, uh, as you introduced, I am the founder of Bamboo Builders. We are, uh, you know, a social enterprise registered with race that uh, builds social entrepreneurs across Southeast Asia. You know, being a senior of ours and Myself and Shiva, we're actually both freshmen. We have never been back to campus because of the current uh, climate, you know, the current COVID climate that we have. So mm -hmm. I just want to ask you, what was your go-to place for food at SMU? Oh, okay. Uh, you know, being a student, you will uh, look for the cheapest places to eat at. So one of my favorite places uh, that I always frequent is Waterloo. So I'm sure many of you have heard of it. Yeah, so it's one of the hawker centers that's nearby SMU. Yeah. Right, so Gabriel, on the topic of food, I understand that one of your first CSP projects involved a food distribution drive in Thailand. And that was what started you on your journey, which led to the eventual creation of Bamboo Builders. So could you share with us what exactly is Bamboo Builders? Oh, um, actually, I thought that, um, you know, you would know what Bamboo Builders was. 
So no, we are familiar with Bamboo Builders, but for, to help our guests out to understand what it is, I think it's better if it comes from the founder himself instead of us explaining. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so just wanted to also uh, share a bit. So I think what we saw was not really a food drive, um, but we were doing a food distribution um, in the mountainous villages of uh, Chiang Rai. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, I just... Just curious, you know, like would like to hear your version of um what you understand to be bamboo builders. Okay, let me go first. Um, from what I understand, you actually train up youths to develop a social entrepreneurship kind of mindset, uh, as well as provide opportunities to go overseas to do community involvement projects. And uh, from what I've seen from some of your social medias. You actually run a YouTube channel, and on that you have actually collab. Yeah, you have actually collaborated with several other social entrepreneurs, social entrepreneurs, and developed a series of uh, videos introducing all these other social entrepreneurs. Okay, um, Shiva, you want to go next? <laughs> well, okay, to be honest, when I first heard about Bamboo Builders, I I thought it was a construction company. So you guys did like sustainable developments. But yeah, so when I looked up into it, I got so confused. And then I, I found out more about the projects you've worked on. I've seen like how many projects you've implemented, created, and how many students you've actually nurtured through this program. And honestly, it's so inspirational. I have no idea how you do it. So today, let's find out. Okay. So maybe Gabriel, you could start by explaining how you even came up with the idea of uh, the name Bamboo Builders. Okay. Um, yeah, I think... So many people ask me this question, right? And um, you're not the only one that that has thought that we do construction. Um, so much so that we actually include it as a FAQ on our website. <laughs> yeah, so um, Bamboo Builders is... Um, so we chose the name Bamboo because like what Joshua was saying, we are a social enterprise that nurtures uh, uh, social entrepreneurs. So the Bamboo has many positive attributes that we believe um, we would like to see in our participants. So for example, they grow um, very strong, they grow very fast, they grow in clusters, and they're flexible, and, but yet very rooted. So um, these are the kind of values that we hope that um, the participants that go through our program, they um, embody at the end of our programs. So we actually uh, work together with not just uh, students in you know uh, urban areas like Singapore, you know like SMU, uh, but we also work together with uh, rural students as well. So we used to you know before COVID when we're able to, when we're able to travel, we used to conduct um, cross cultural teams where we would fly um, you know the, like selected individuals from very passionate young people from different countries in ASEAN. We would do a capital, we would train them in our social entrepreneurship uh, methodologies, and then we would go into the rural areas to work together with a rural school to start a school-based business. So this business uh, would then um, teach academic uh, subjects through business concepts. So for example, they would learn about um, their you know, basic math through addition, I mean through like accounting. And so in producing a final year project, which is a business, which pays them a salary as they come to school. So the problem, um, I mean, the, the, this, this was a solution to the problem of uh, students not being able to attend school because they would just rather go to work, right? Because it puts food on the table. Yeah, so um, that's what we, we did. Um, but interestingly, um, now because of the COVID situation, then we are unable to do that. In some places in the rural areas, they aren't even uh, they don't even have internet connection. Yeah. So now we are conducting uh, online programs that link up youths that are looking to develop 21st century skills uh, in career-related subjects such as marketing. And we are linking them to um, you know, social enterprises that need these uh, capability development. So for example, you know, uh, like you guys like, are looking at developing your marketing skills and another social enterprise that's working on an education project in Vietnam, they also require 
um, these marketing uh, talent, right? So we will conduct a program that jointly matches um, these people up and such that on one hand, the students are able to learn these skills. And then on the other hand, the social enterprise gains uh, these skilled talent. And through the course of the program, they're able to uh, directly produce uh, collateral and uh, things that they can immediately use. Yeah. Wow. Do you know all this? It really sounds like there's so many different steps. There's so many processes, and you know, just certain things that perhaps either group lacks. Like just now, you mentioned uh, those over there. They may not. They some of them do not even have Wi-Fi, which you know, to us, it's such a basic necessity in our lives here as Singaporeans. So my next question to you is: What are the some? What are some of the challenges that you have faced? since uh, starting Bamboo Builders? Challenges, right? Mm, so one of my main challenges uh, is in having uh, committed and uh, core group of um, people, so like manpower. Yeah, so uh, one of my greatest challenges, I think, um, was when I was actually on exchange. Um, I went to Netherlands, so it was a very cold place. Um, at night, it would be re really dark. And then um, one of these nights, I was actually um, talking to the team, saying that, you know, um, the kind of commitment that we've been receiving has been rather um, half-hearted. And um, I was telling them that, you know, like, I think it's better if you choose whether you're in or out. And I thought that, you know, maybe out of like a group of 10, maybe like one, like two or three would say yes. And um, much to my horror, um, zero said yes. And so um, I very quickly found myself alone after like, you know, my first year. Yeah. So that's just one example. Um, but, you know, over the years we have, I mean, but it's very important not to give up. So we just continue to um, see more and more people. So Currently, we are working on putting in place a structure to retain talent and to also um, you know, make sure that people see the impact that they are creating. Yeah. Right. So when you go through all these challenges and there's so many tasks to get done, like what keeps you driven? How do you stay motivated when you go through all these difficulties? Uh, well, I, I guess remembering your why is a very cliche but true answer. So uh, whenever there are challenges, I always remember the little girl that um, ate rice off the floor. Yeah, so just to share a bit more also, because not everybody may have heard this story. So like I first started Bamboo Builders because I saw a little girl eat rice off the floor during our food distribution uh, project in uh, Thailand and um, yeah so I couldn't unsee the image after coming back to Singapore and I tried to tell my friends about it uh, but nobody really understood they just you know said things like yeah yeah totally like somebody should do something about it you know uh, you know yeah I read about poverty you know but you know they didn't really empathize with the issue because they just haven't been through it themselves yeah so um yeah, so hence bamboo builders, we it's like both sides thing, not just overseas but in Singapore too. So whenever uh, I face challenges, I always try to think back of this goal. Okay, so you know we have all heard a lot about what you do at bamboo builders and some of the difficulties you have faced, and I'm sure. You know, for those who are watching, you would love to get to know more about Bamboo Builders. So what I'm going to do is I am going to copy and paste uh, all their social medias. So you can find them. You can find them on their website, bamboobuilders.org. You can find them on LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. So please do go and check them out. Uh, really, I've seen their YouTube videos and this is all I have to say. It is wonderful. Thank you. Thanks once again, Gabriel, for, you know, just taking time off this evening to come and share with all of us uh, just what you and your team does. Yeah, I think uh, maybe one more thing to add on. 
Uh, we're also we're always on the lookout for um, volunteers. So I think you can kindly clear your CIP hours with us uh, and also uh, internships as well. Yeah. So thank you so much, Joshua and Shiva. Thank you, Gabriel. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much, Joshua and Shiva, for that performance. Both of you have very unique traits which you brought to the interview. Joshua is so full of infectious energy and fun personality. Shiva, on the other hand, has a very cool, calm, composed personality uh, with an amazing radio voice. Joshua, great energy at the start. Good chemistry of your partner. Very good chemistry. Big smile, big gestures from you, big reactions. It's all good things. It makes you look very engaged. Just be aware, if you're wearing glasses, your lights will often show this glare. Shiva! Good matching of energy of your partner, very good chemistry between the two of you. Nice. It shows that you were well prepared. The Entrepreneur Award Flub. Oof, that could have been completely avoided, right? That made you look unprepared. You're actually energy-wise much more chill compared to your partner. Uh, there's something you have to keep aware and awareness of. Uh, let me start with the feedback for Shiva. I felt that you started off so strong, you had a clear voice, uh, you had a very grounded energy, really loved it. You interviewed very clearly, you didn't miss the curveball that was thrown at you when Gabriel re-asked you the question. I thought you handled it really well. However, towards the end, I did feel like you plateaued. Um, the interview was going pretty well, smooth sailing up the river, and then you just didn't end it in the way I thought you would, which would be on a, on a high, or you, you didn't really give us much more of your personality, which I would have really liked to see. Going to Joshua, I felt that um, you had really good energy compared to Shiva's uh, more reserved and grounded energy. You were kind of like giving us like more energy, whereas he was kind of pulling back. Uh, you could have handled the improv section a little better. I feel I felt that you you did you were, you were caught a little unaware when he re-asked you the question. But the biggest bone I have to pick with you is when Gabriel was sharing his story, which is quite a sentimental and like heart heartwarming story about his experience um, doing bamboo builders. Um, and he actually said that the people around him didn't have much empathy and couldn't really connect with him uh, in, in that story. And you kind of didn't really follow up with that. You kind of just moved on to the next section. Whereas I thought, I expected you to, to at least give a bit more of a response. Okay, the both of you had fantastic chemistry and teamwork. I would say it's the best of the contestants and really such a good job on that because I think um, despite the two of you having very different styles, you all complemented one another, you all picked up on each other's um, gaps and you all did really well. So great stuff. So who's moving on to the finals? Type your guesses in the comments below. The grand finals will be live streamed right here on Friday, 17 September at 7.30 p.m. So stay tuned. Before I say goodbye, I'd like to give a big shout out to Food Panda, I'm Kim Korean Barbecue, Wonder Gelato, and Smooths for sponsoring Voice Personality Hunt 2021. Thank you for joining us for another round of Voice Personality Hunt 2021. See you at the next one. Bye!